greatest form of control is where you think you're free when you're being fundamentally manipulated and dictated. One form of dictatorship is being in a prison cell and you can see the bars and touch it. The other one is sitting in a prison cell but you can't see the bars you think you're free. What the human race is suffering from is mass hypnosis. We are being hypnotized by people like this. News readers, politicians, teachers, lecturers. We are in a country and in a world that is being run by unbelievably sick people. The chasm between what we're told is going on and what is really going on is absolutely enormous. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Red Pill Hardcore TV show. And yes, as always, I am your host, V. I want to start the show off uh, with a movie clip from a, a documentary called Big Oil Whistleblowers. And so my guest is from this documentary, but, but just please, you're not going to be disappointed. This is something that blew me away. So uh, watch this footage. But the only way I'm going to get people's attention is to do this. I think this if you were a kid, I think if you were a kid playing right now and you fell in that, a little kid out here by yourself. You'd be done. You'd be, you'd be stuck and you'd die. Rocks. All under this entire thing, they put all these rocks trying to cover up the oil. Now how much oil is under those rocks? We don't even know that. This is just what comes to the surface. What is under the rocks? You can't, it's hard to dig. And they know that. It's a technique they use to cover up oil. All right. So, you see how this all bounces right all in here? Can you see that? Yeah. The whole thing, it's all oil. This is just canvas. See this? They put this over this entire area. It's all canvas. They plant grass underneath of it. The grass will pop through. This is all oil. Okay? Can you see how deep I am? My whole leg is buried. It's not easy to get out, but this grass is covering it up for you. All right? I'm just telling you, it's here. It's going to get in your wells. This is the truth. These companies are evil. And what I mean by evil is you do not do this in my community. Ain't going to happen, even if I'm dead. It's October 9th. I just showed you the coordinates. We're at Talmadge Creek. And I'm going to just show you that they put sand over the top of the oil. Can you see how clear it is? You can see right down to the bottom. looks really clear. I'm going to take some sand. I'm going to show you real close up. This is sand. All right. See, there's no sheen. The reason why that's important is because when I dig down, the oil is underneath the sand. See it coming up? It's under the sand. It's yeah. not in the sand, it's under the sand that they put there in massive amounts. It's John Blowing Ball again. This place is full of oil. You have to watch this video. You have to show everybody this video. This is one of my first videos where I said I was a loss for words. I told them a long time ago there was oil in here months I mean this was back in October I told them exactly where it was they have not cleaned it it's all through here it's December 12th I just broke a hole through this ice right here this is all ice oh. And underneath this ice is sick, toxic oil. Just massive amounts of it. Um, it's, it's super bad. And the reason why I came to this area is because I knew it was here because they told us not to clean it. So 
I just got a little bit of smudge on my glove. Just showing you. I mean, I, I keep doing this over and over. It's it's all here. This place is just full of oil. Yep, that's gonna get in your kids' bodies after they eat venison from this area. It's all Embridge's fault. From investigation, they knew about it two years ahead of time that the pipe was going bad. They didn't do nothing about it. I just stirred it up. I'm gonna try to grab some chunks of oil. Wow, your hand's already covered. I can see it from here. Hold, on, hold your hand still. What I'm doing right now is I'm gonna show you that this is really oil. I'm gonna stick mud in my glove. All right? But when you rinse it off, only oil will stick. May 20th, 2013. This area is just full of oil. That's why EPA is making Enbridge redredge this because kids are swallowing drops of this oil and the MSDS sheet specifically says it can kill you, cause seizures, coma, liver damage, kidney damage, on and on. Leukemia, cancer. Do you want your fish to have this? Do you want your kids to have this in their body? Or the deer, rabbits, squirrels, anything that you may eat, is gonna, this is gonna be in their body. Submerged oil recovery. It says Ceresco Dam, Morrow Lake, cleanup, 100%. Inspection sign off, 100%. And this is on 10-24-2010. Well, well over a year from my videos. It's sickening. I mean, this is this is actual proof. This is Enbridge documents that was sent to the EPA. 100% proof. And we know now that they've lied because Ceresco Dam, after my complaints, they went and redug up. And it took them almost a year to get where they're at now and it's still full of oil. And Morrow Lake's the same way. How much more proof do you need? And that courageous man, ladies and gentlemen, is John Bolin, Bolinbar, 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 John Bolinbar. <laughs> <laughs> I feel I feel like saying uh, uh, a melon baller. I don't know because uh, you seem to be gutting these people uh, with this factual information. I mean, falling waist deep into yeah. solid oil. Covered that was, up with grass. Yeah, two, that was two miles long on both sides of that creek, not counting the swamps. We're talking about after I turned them in, they had to spend about $600 million to re-dig up all these signed-off areas. And they signed off with seven supervisors, three from Enbridge, three from the EPA, and one from DEQ. I mean, it was, it was a cover-up. There's no doubt about it. And I mean, this is you know, creeks. These are areas where children play, uh, men fish, uh, you know, there's hunting. And you mentioned venison, deer, obviously, you know, yeah. the people would have to eat this stuff. And I'm gonna tell you something, watching your documentary, I mean, I, I pride myself on being Mr. Know-it-all <laughs> and, and, and having at least some knowledge about everything, but I did not realize the impact that oil spills have. I mean, you're talking about people who have uh, uh, liver failure, uh, brain cancer. I mean, so many illnesses come from just a little taste of oil in, in, your, in your system. Well, so when there's a spill, people don't really tell you in the oil industry, but the fumes has benzene, toluene, hydrogen sulfide, methane, 
uh, hexane, dectane, propane, and, and hundreds of toxic chemicals to thin out what we now use, tar sand oil. Uh, it comes from Canada. It's really thick like peanut butter, and it will not flow through the pipes. So they put these thinners in. It's kind of like paint thinner, but it's so toxic when there's a spill that we're breathing it in for 25 miles away from the spill, and everybody is being poisoned, the entire community. And in this situation, it went 40 miles down a river, and then it went into Lake Michigan, and it poisoned 30,000 people. And we don't know how bad it is right now. Right now, there's seven kids with leukemia in our local school. But this is just, you know, seven years later, what's going to happen 20 years later when we all have cancer and liver damage, and I, I have kidney damage myself. And, you know, I've had uh, a friend of mine who also works in the oil field uh, on my radio show talk about fracking. And, I mean, we know Flint, Michigan is having terrible issues. Is this related? I mean, I know the fracking is different from oil spill, but are we doing the same environmental contamination? Well, fracking is basically shooting these super toxic chemicals, which would be almost the same as the thinners, and they shoot it down into the rock, and it, it breaks away the rock, it kind of dissolves it, and it releases natural gas and oil. And, but the problem is it poisons all the water for tens of miles away. So these people are now getting hurt, hysterectomies and cancer. It's no different than Aaron Brockovich, and they're all, the whole community around these fracking wells, everybody's being poisoned. And now there's earthquakes. Uh, you know, Oklahoma has 300 earthquakes a year now. Michigan has never had earthquakes, and we've had two in the last two years, you know. And it's because of all the fracking. And they're breaking up the rock, it lubricates it, and they're starting to shift all, all the fault lines. Um, we have to stop this. I mean, and because 50% of all of our fracking fluid or the, the fracking, um, what comes out from fracking and all the oil, uh, 50% of all of it is actually shipped overseas. It's not for our cars. It's not for your car, not for my car. It doesn't heat my home. Um, it's, it's for a foreign entity, um, and we're being poisoned by it. Our waterways, nonstop on a daily basis, are being poisoned because these pipelines can leak up to 2% every single day. And when you're talking about one pipeline out of 400 that can leak up to 5,000 gallons a day, and, and seriously, it can leak 5,000 gallons a day and no alarm will go off. If you have 50 gallons here, 100 gallons here, between all the pump stations where it's less than 2%, no alarm will go off. Not even the oil company knows the leak and until a farmer finds it. And so, I mean, should there be some something in place, some sort of uh, toxicity meters, you know, posted into the ground, uh, sort of like the monitor sort of type of things that, you know, along these pipelines. I mean, I, I mean, something can be developed for this. Something, I mean, how do you test for the toxicity to begin with? Besides the obvious, you know, oily or sheen-like substance in the water. They don't want us to know the truth. They don't want to do the proper testing. So I'm going to use Kalamazoo, Michigan, where the largest inland oil spill in North American history happened in my community, in my backyard on uh, right next to our property. Um, they did a 100 air sample test on the day of the spill, and they said there was zero hydrogen sulfide, zero benzene. Well, the, about two years later, I'm going through thousands of documents, because we could smell this stuff for miles away, and people are getting sick and puking and going into seizures and going into coma. Some people died. And so I actually started reading these documents and learning more about this. And we found out that EPA on the same day said it was 2,500 times the legal limit than what Embridge said there was zero. Now, they didn't say there was some benzene. They said there was zero benzene. And the actual fact was it was 16 parts per million, um, and it could have been a lot higher. Um, so it, it, they don't care about us, and, and they profit from oil spills. You know, when I was talking to you on the phone, I, I mentioned, and you were like, wait a minute, what? I didn't know this either, and I worked for the oil industry. I used to be a yard boss for one of the largest pipeline companies in America, and I actually learned this by accident. 
they profit from oil spills. In Michigan, they knew the pipe had 90-some cracks in it for five years. But they don't want to shut it down to fix it because they might lose 8 to 10 million bucks a day. So what they do is they just get permits and they wait to fix it when it spills. Well, when it spills, the insurance company hires them to clean up their own mess. A lot of times they own the cleanup companies, they own the cleanup materials, they buy all the local land for really cheap because nobody wants to live there anymore, so now they basically own part of the community. Then they raise the gas prices in the local area for more than you know what they should, they gouge us, and the pipe is fixed by the, the, the insurance company. So they make two to three times more money if they do not fix the pipe. And so I've been actually working with union members. I'm a union member. And I went and had my video played at the state union meeting here in Michigan. They asked me to come because they hunt, they fish, they have kids, and they're sick of this. I'm not trying to get rid of union jobs. I'm trying to create union jobs. I'm trying to get the industry to start fixing the old pipes and stop building new foreign pipes that are going to another country. We need to worry about America. We need to worry about North America. And I just had a lady from Mexico contact me today. I mean, Enbridge is all over North America polluting all of our land. They don't care about us. It's a corporation or profit. Now, well, you say they don't care about us. and but, but, but the thing is that we are becoming aware. And so do you think this thing with Standing Rock, for example, these oil companies trying to build these pipelines through Native American lands. I mean, is that a way to get away from the laws governing the United States? Since uh, technically these lands are not governed by you know, federal law, it's tribal law, which they still don't even respect. So if something happens, something breaks, is that their way of saying, oh, well, because, uh, you know, they don't care about us. You know they don't care about the Native Americans. And I'm part Native American myself. Um, Same here. I, I think, yeah, and God bless you. You know, we have a hard fight. And I grew up white mostly, but I'm learning my heritage, and I was given an eagle feather out to Standing Rock um, to say thank you for everything that I do. Uh, this is actually a felony to have. I didn't know that. But if it's given to you through a ceremony, then you're allowed to have it. Um, I've been to so many powwows. I was in Standing Rock for six weeks. Um, I was shot with rubber bullets. I was sprayed with water hoses in 20 degree weather. Um, and I had a camera and a press pass. Um, we were, you know, 50 feet away from any police officers with barbed wire between us. Nobody was hurting the police officers, but they sure were hurting us. One girl almost had her blow arm blown off. She can't use it anymore. One girl did lose her eye with a rubber bullet hitting her in the eye. Um, it, it was. I couldn't believe it. I'm a Navy veteran. I have a Bronze Star. I used to drive an aircraft carrier. And Bill Clinton, you know, was there to congratulate me for my Bronze Star. So I feel as if, you know, that I need to do something just because I don't get a paycheck anymore doesn't mean that I shouldn't still be fighting for the people in my country because that's the oath I have um, in my heart and what I pledge to America. And I'm not going to let these people down. Um, these oil companies have gave me a lot of death threats. I've had a lot of attempts on my life, cut brakes, hit over the head, black eyes, mess with my gas filters, uh, bolts taken out of my wheels, screws in the sides of my wheels, flat tires, on and on. Um, but I haven't quit. It's been seven years now. I work for free. I've spent 130 grand of my own money to do this. And uh, it's I have three little girls now, a two, three, and four-year-old. And uh, that's what I'm fighting for. I'm fighting for them. And I was doing this before I had those kids. But you know what? Now I'm fighting twice as hard. And I'm not going to quit till they kill me. I know they will. But, you know, maybe you can help me be more popular. And the reason why I say that is the police and the sheriff of our community said, John, don't quit what you're doing because they will kill you. If you wait two, three years and no one hears your name, you're gone. And, and this is a police officer on video telling me this stuff. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm hated by very many, but approached by none. Um, on that note, you are uh, essentially what I call a targeted individual. This is something that is known 
throughout certain circles. You have whistleblowers and targeted individuals, and in most scenarios, both are one and the same. As you had just said, you've come under death threats, uh, attempts on your life, uh, uh, destruction to your property. It's something that every target individual goes through. This is what my show is actually focused, uh, yep. centered around. And yeah, so, well, it's lucky to still be alive. That, that's the truth. There's a lot of whistleblowers that come up dead. Yes, uh, agreed. Uh, especially with all these vaccine, uh, holistic medicine doctors talk about vaccines. They discovered this and that, and they come up dead. And that sort of thing. But uh, this is a very serious situation. So, I mean, what is the implications of actually having to deal with these pipelines going here and there? Because I think it's a mind job. It's a psyop. Oh, you know, these huge, you know, boats carrying oil across whatever buys of water. Whoops, they spill. There's water uh, uh, contamination oil leak, you know, we should be having oil pipes instead. Uh, I think, you know, how, 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 how uh, with, with, with these boats having huge reservoirs, tanks for fuel, these never get breached, but somehow these, the, the, the oil gets breached and leaks everywhere. How, how does that work? Is, is there a mine job going on here? Hey, well, think about this. When they were trying to put the XL pipeline through, how many train wrecks happen within a few months and kill 47, 48 people? You know, right immediately you hear about train oil train wrecks all over the place. And I think a lot of them were caused. Um, and one of the conductors, he said, yeah, my partner was told not to ride with me, and it's the first time ever he was told that. And it just makes you wonder, did this train derail on purpose? So that way it was in the news saying that trains get go, you know, and getting wrecks and oils all over the place and it kills people. So now we need pipelines because they're safer. But this is what I don't understand. Why do they want to put the XL pipeline through the largest aquifer in the United States? And China owns TransCanada, the majority. There's 16 subsidies um, that subdivisions of companies that own TransCanada. So everybody says, oh, it's a Canadian pipe. No, it's a China pipe. And there's documents that suggest that they can suck water out, kind of like Nestle pulling water out of the Great Lakes. So what if China wants our water? Because it's more valuable than oil. And there's already an easement where I worked on myself called the Keystone Pipeline. And they could go through the same easement, but instead they want to go through this aquifer. Now the other thing is you were asking about Standing Rock. They were supposed to put this pipeline through the white area of Bismarck and they fought it and so instead of arguing with all the the majority of white people um, you know that have money and have attorneys and want to fight this they go through the poor tribal areas the tribal land whether they get permission or not they just basically take it and they call it intimate domain and the truth is they don't have a right to take our land um, or tribal land and put pipes through it and poison our water um, and say it's for the good of America when it's a foreign pipeline. That oil is actually going to export. It's None of it's for us. And that's what people don't understand. We could shut off 50% of our pipelines tomorrow and we would still have the same gas prices if they didn't gouge us and we'd still have the same amount of oil usage. And every single year we're using less oil in the United States. Why? Because solar and wind's taking over, renewable energy. People are waking up. You know, right now I can get you zero down solar where your payments are less than what your actual electric bill is. Why wouldn't you do it? In 12 years it's paid off and now you have no electricity bill for the next 20 years. You know, um, so I'm working with solar companies. I'm trying to find a solution to this problem because I'm not against oil. My whole family works for oil companies. I'm against irresponsible oil, allowing leaks, not fixing pipes, knowing that there's cracks and not fixing them, you know, buying people off, um, you know, why can't a person that gets leukemia sue? Because it's after three years and you can't sue after three years and they know that. So they get you sick, they tell you everything's fine, five, seven, eight years down the road you get cancer and you can't do nothing about it. 
the way it is. And then it's a big game plan. They know, they know what they're doing. Well, I was going to say, it, it actually sounds like Agenda 21 all the way through. Uh, yeah. People are dying. You know, they get to depopulate for the people who, who actually get to stick around if that didn't say anything, well, this is the kind of people that they want. Uh, for those who are being activists and, and, and fighting against this, our rights are being trampled. And they're shutting down media. And, you know, they yep. don't want anybody to see this stuff. And so... And the, you're the media. I'm the media. We're the truth. The problem is CNN was at Standing Rock with me, getting sprayed with water hoses, being shot with rubber bullets. I mean, he was watching it all. He was right there. And that CNN guy turned in all of his footage to CNN, and I talked to him two or three days later after I saw the news, and I said, what the hell is going on? On the news, CNN said that none of this happened. They said that the firefighters were putting out fires with the water hoses. 100% lie. It was all made up. I mean, there is, it was a 1,000% lie. And 300 people were injured that night, and 25 people went to the hospital for stitches and, and injuries and stuff. I mean, it was, I was disgusted that our, our American warriors that used to be over in Iraq are now being paid by Tiger Swan, and some, they're mercenaries now. And, and the police officers were getting paid like 10 grand a week to sit there and harass us. Um, they should have went after the oil companies. Why? Because they didn't have a permit to dig, and they were still digging. How do I know? Because my brother was there. My brother was out there, and they were still digging with no permit. They were told not to permit uh, dig by a judge, and the police weren't stopping them. You know, it was it was a huge conspiracy. And here's another thing: it was a lot of infiltrators that started fires, that threw rocks. We found out later, and we knew at the time that they weren't part of our group. Um, because but there was ten thousand people out there. But we realized real quick that these people were paid off, and we found out that many of them were, and they have came forward because of the guilt they had, and they have told their story that they were paid to lie and take ammunition out there and shoot weapons to make it look like protesters were shooting. And then when I proved, and other people proved, that it was actually a paid informant working for the oil company that supposedly shot at police officers, then, of course, they said no shots were fired later on in court. You know, so they they do what they want, and they've arrested a lot of people and charged a lot of people, and they're going to jail for no reason. They didn't do anything wrong. Well, I'll tell you, uh, the same thing was happening with the Black Lives Matter marches. Yes. <laughs> yep. Yeah, uh, paid infiltrators, fake uh, violence they just to, to make black savage or whatever you know the martial law and this is a big part of it too I think uh, they want to create these scenarios in which they can have martial law and it's ridiculous they, um, let me tell you about Standing Rock for a second there was a four billion dollar insurance policy that if a riot is started and cannot be controlled and it affects the pipeline that the insurance company has to pay the four billion dollars to to um, the oil company that was uh, putting this out there, and and we call we call them no dapple, and so uh, transfer partners was their actual name. But the thing is, they were going to profit if they could start a riot. They tried everything they could to start a riot, and they almost succeeded, but with these fake infiltrators. Um, I had a guy for six weeks become my friend. And he used to work for the Republican Party. He was on stage with Jeb Bush, uh, what, 16 times, and he brags about it. His name is Rod Weber, and I, he was my friend. He, he helped me with my camera footage. He carried my camera around. He uh, stayed in my camper. I fed him. You know, um, it, it was a good friendship. And then as soon as I tried to put this film that you're going to watch out there, the big oil whistleblower, he actually got it taken off YouTube two days before saying it was his footage, and he was lying. And we proved he was lying. I won my case through YouTube, but, um, I mean, he was an infiltrator, hardcore. And he and, and he tricked me. I mean, that, that's what they do. They become your friend, and they try to get you from the inside if they can't get you, you know, from the outside. Well, that's... 
<laughs> That's actually, that, that, that happens everywhere as well. It seems like we really do live in a holographic universe. You know, this goes all throughout my ordeal with my intelligence, my war against intelligence agencies and, and so forth. It, it happens in every area, GMO, Monsanto, it's happening everywhere. But on that note, I, uh, we got to take uh, a quick commercial break. And we'll be right back. Yep. Think there isn't much difference between emergency food companies? We bought competing products from recognized brands so we could show you a very simple comparison to Legacy Premium. to see. Legacy not only gives you more food for your money, but Legacy is non-GMO and tastes great. Look, I want people to buy this. People, buy Lou Garino's book. <laughs> yeah, guys, it's, it's on Amazon. You can check it out by the author, Lou Garino, T-A-R-I-N-O. Uh, you can go to my Facebook page, Business Newsmakers. Business newsmakers, you can order it on there. You can go to Amazon. The book is called Fear and Loathing, Voting in America 2016. But it's, but it's more than just a voting book uh, and about apathy. It's about how we got to this point in history. So it could be relevant in 2020 as well. How did we get here right now? What were the set of circumstances politically and socially that, that melted to this point? Where our country is the way it is right now, where they have divided us, and when I say they, we are not divided amongst ourselves. We are united, man. I live in one of the most culturally diverse cities in America, in the world, Houston, Texas. People open the door for each other. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Audie, there's no hate. It's all what they're selling on TV through their psychological operations. So it's all Absolutely. about that. It's all about how the Clintons came to power, the Bushes, you name it, guys. Fear and Loathing, Voting in America 2016, it's a must read. It gives you a different look uh, as opposed to the partisan views. It gives you an anti-partisan view. How about the, how this country started without any parties whatsoever? And how about how they collabor collaborated to take control of our country? So you get a chance, give it a, give it a read. It's not too long. It's not war and peace. I make the points rather quickly. Fear and Loathing. Voting in America 2016. And I also want to encourage you to stay tuned to me, this new television show that is enlightening the world, that is illuminating the people that are illuminating us. So we've got to stay true, we've got to seek the truth, and we've got to keep endlessly seeking the truth. So stay tuned, guys, and, and keep, keep watching. I am B from the Red Pill Hardcore radio show and TV show. I'm here to tell you guys about my militia, the Red Pill Militia of Minnesota. The militia is there to protect the people of the United States from any enemy that may threaten our way of life, regardless of religion or political stance. We will unite the people as one to fight tyranny of any form from anywhere, including our own government. We We'll see the people free again. I hope you would like to join my militia. Please visit our Facebook page, The People's Red Pill Militia. Like, comment, let us know in general what you think. If you want to be a volunteer, all you have to do is coordinate with our members. We're all honorary brothers of the
the militia because we all protect our freedoms, our constitutional rights, and the most important things that we have as American citizens. So please help me in protecting those rights and join my militia. Okay, okay. Uh, great conversation with John uh, <laughs> during commercial break, but we're going to get into what we were talking about. Uh, other whistleblowers contacting you, letting you know that you're doing the right thing, which is a great feeling, I can tell you. Yeah, uh, Do you want to talk about some of those people? Yeah, I've, I mean, I've had several people, um, half dozen people contact me and, and say, John, I'm quitting my oil job. You know, I'm a supervisor. I work in the um, the chemical field. You know, I, I do things that I don't want to do anymore, and your videos have woke me up because they sit in an office or they build the pipeline, but they don't see the after effects. I didn't know the after effects. Um, and I learned a lot over the last seven years from interviewing hundreds of people, workers, sick people. You know, I've traveled around the country. I've documented four oil spills already. I'm going back to Mayflower, Arkansas real soon to redocument that four years later. You know, I've been to 20 states in the last 120 days. I've been traveling the country, and, and I'm spending my own money, and um, i got to get funding. If anybody out there wants to donate 20 bucks, I'm telling you what, I will put it to good use. I will kick some butt, and I will do it eth I, I'm ethical. I'll do it the right way. And, um, you know, I've had people contact me saying that they were on the verge of suicide and they, they remembered my hardships and my struggles and what I went through. And they're like, I, I can't kill myself. What I went through um, is half of what John Bullballs went through. And so they, you know, have called me up and said, thank you. You saved my life. And... That's what I want. My goal is to be the person that oil workers and fracking workers and coal and anybody that sees e illegal and unethical things, if they don't want to lose their jobs and have death threats and attempts on their life and possibly killed, give me a call secretly and I'll, I'll investigate. I'll send a crew out. As soon as I get funding to do all this, I'm going to have crews, two, three RVs, and we're going to be traveling the country documenting different um, contaminations of water and we're gonna we're gonna be the next Greenpeace but you know we're gonna do it hands-on we're not gonna be scared to get a you know I'll get arrested because I know when I get arrested the footage I have and the information I have will actually prove my innocence and it will be huge um, the oil companies will never sue me you'll never see me in the court of law they're doing everything they can to keep me out of court the lawsuit I have against the oil company for wrongfully firing me, the judge dropped it two weeks before he retired, and he died two months later. I can't prove anything. All I can prove is I had a very good case. Because I, I mean, if you watch my video, you'll see there's thousands of issues that will um, point to the direction John Bowman is telling the truth. It's not my words; it's their words, and uh, that's only five percent. The video you saw. And so you, you had a, 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 a really good case, and and people, we, we've really got to get this film going. I am actually have worked this out with John to have his video re-released through my TV network. And I, <laughs> this is an experience just to watch it. I'm going to tell you, uh, you know, I'm Mr. Rough and Tough, and uh, just watching that guy seizure out, in, in, in that house, uh, I, I got teary eyed. My wife cried. Yeah, and I, I did. It. You cried. I did. You saw me, and I seen him have four different seizures during my time there filming um, and being close to that family. Um, four different times he had seizures, and uh, a lot of people, dozens and dozens of people, were having seizures. That's just one man I got on video. I mean, and. I don't even know how serious this is because the people that were really sick or their family member died, 
and they, they were bought off. Uh, oil companies quickly will pay those people off, make them sign gag orders, give them enough money so they can leave town or move to another state or wherever they want to go. Um, and it's the poor people, basically, that I'm interviewing, the ones that didn't have the opportunity to get an attorney, the ones that couldn't fight. And those are the people that they don't, they just, they don't care because they know they can't do nothing to fight them. The guy not, that coughed like until his esophagus detached from his... his yep. it, oh, yep. that's, that's brutal. That's brutal. It is. And so he just lost his case in the court, and this is how he lost his case, because he won his appeal. And so then he went back to court, and the oil company kept telling the judge and everything, well, he was 20 miles away from the oil spill. Well, they don't mention that the oil was 120 feet from his house. It's going down river, and if you read the guidebooks that we go by for cleanup of spills, it specifically says that there's a thousand foot evacuation from oil. From large amounts of oil, there's a thousand foot evacuation. It doesn't say because the spill happened 20 miles away that those fumes aren't poisoning you, and they were. They poisoned everybody for 40 miles on both sides of the river. Thousands of people. Thousands of people. I don't even know how bad this is because people all the time that I interviewed, you know, there's several people that are in my video that a year later are now dead. I mean, there is some people that's in my video that I found out were dead before that I made that video. You know, um, this final free version that you're going to see. And... The one girl just called me recently. She said, now I got cancer. It went from COPD and I was sick all the time. Now I got cancer. And it, it's a gradual thing. My head supervisor died in three years. He had diabetes, but when you're poisoned, it amplifies whatever you have tenfold. Yes. And that's the thing. You don't know why you're getting sick and dying and shortness of memory and your liver damage and kidney damage. My daughter was born with a deformity. My dog got tumors and died. My cat got tumors and died. My uncle um, died. He had one leg cut off from a blood disorder, second leg cut off, and then he died right after the spill. Lived right next to the oil spill. Um, you have my stepdad had cancer cut out of his face. He's got scars all along his face right now because he got cancer right after the spill. And it's hard to prove. You can't prove any of this. But So what I do is just interview people all over the country at oil spills, and they have the same symptoms. And the symptoms say that you can die within a few breaths of, of this from the MSDS sheet from the oil company. But the crazy thing is when you do get a seizure and die, even though it says that's what you can get by breathing it, then they say prove it. And that's the hard part because they have billions of dollars. Well, what about in, let's say, the plant life? Because... You know, around these oil spill areas, you still see green, lush plant life. Uh, I mean... It's okay. modified grass. They, they actually have to use modified grass that grows in oil, and they do that on purpose, otherwise it won't grow. Obviously. GMO, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. that I, I was wondering about that. Uh, yep. and, and so, but this stuff there's, actually there's, takes there's the, the chemicals... I'm well, sorry, Dennis. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, it, this, 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 these plants actually take chemicals up into uh, their, their biological makeup. Yep. These animals eat it, you know. Uh, and so uh, there's going to be generational uh, 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 effects um, from yep. life form to life form. And they I don't know what it deer. is. We don't I know don't what it is. I don't eat and I don't... I, uh -huh. I don't fish anymore around here because of the tumors and, and the oil and the scales and the deer where you won't see the tumors, you know. Um, and so the, this Michigan, where the spill was, is considered one of the top one or two deer hunting country or uh, states in North America. I mean, we have lots of deer. Um, the county I grew up in, Hillsdale, is actually most of the time the number one county in the country for deer and they're eating that grass that has the DNA of that oil in it and it is giving them tumors and that deer are coming out with birth defects and stuff. We had a lot of family members lose their children 
they were pregnant during the spill and, and they would have miscarriages or they would um, their daughters and sons would be born with deformities like my daughter was you know and so thank God it was something small on my daughter that we could have surgery and fix but when I sued the oil company they had motion they had five attorneys like Aaron Brockovich all sitting there I have one attorney and they had motions I couldn't talk about sick people, couldn't talk about the cover-up, couldn't talk about my dog dying, couldn't talk about my daughter's deformity, couldn't talk about my kidneys being messed up. All I could talk about was being wrongfully fired on one single day. That's how the court system is hooked in with these big corporations. Um, and it's, it's the way it is, like I said. That's a big theme running through my show right now. I've talked to a lot of legal people and there's this whole gag order and what you can say uh, sorry but the First Amendment uh, that's, that's that's not how how it's supposed to work um, you know especially with these cases that people are railroaded in I mean we need media in the courtrooms we need video cameras in the courtroom yeah. anyone can reference at any point in time yeah. and research yeah um, yeah yeah, yeah. And so I, I want to ask, so how do you do a proper cleanup? Because you're visiting these sites, you know, sometime a year, two years, several years after supposedly there's been a cleanup, and you're still finding oil. I mean, how much is acceptable and how much is not? Because, I mean, I, I see you do the rake into, you know, some uh, growth and, and, and water, some, some plant growth, and you see sheen come up. Now, is that acceptable or is that not acceptable? How much of this can we take? Well, we, we, we shouldn't have any oil in it. When I was a kid, I was taught one drop of oil will poison a thousand gallons of water. Well, I just dug a hole, if you look on my website, um, just dug a hole in front of reporters recently in the last two months, and I actually dug two foot deep right next to the kids park, right next to the river, and this is seven years later. And I use I always use a newspaper in my raw footage so I can prove that it's after that day. That was the smartest thing I ever done. But I dug a hole and oil just seeps right in. And the kids are right there playing, not too far away. And and it's all over. Our whole community is like that. Not every spot. But when you have 40 miles, you know, I dug thousands of holes to find areas that had the cover-up. And as I said, 600 million bucks it costed to re-dig these areas out approximately. Um, I've costed big oil over a billion bucks. I mean, Exxon hates me, BP hates me, uh, TransCanada hates me, um, Enbridge really hates me. I mean, I'm pissing a lot of very big, important people off and a guy in Washington, D.C. came up to me. Don't know who he is. I'll probably never see him again. But there was a big, huge event out there, 40,000 people, and I was speaking and stuff. And he walked up to me and said, John, there's very big, powerful people having very big, powerful meetings about you. And what he, I, I don't know if that was a threat or a warning or to say, hey, good job. And... When I get followed, it's been proven that I've been followed. It's been proven from emails that we got from Discovery from the court case that they have police officers that were paid to befriend me trying to get secrets from me. The thing is, I always tell the truth. There is no lies about me. There's, none of my footage is, is edited a different way to change anything. Um, I have YouTube videos with a full 15-minute interview, and you might only see two minutes of it or 30 seconds of it. But I, I have uncut it or unedited stuff so people can watch it so they can see that it's not my words. I'm not tampering with it. It's not yellow journalism. It's the truth. It's the way it is. And, you know, I've only cost uh, my, my enemies uh, oh, a few million. I'm working on about 10 or 20 more right here. But I got... I got a long way to catch up to you, my friend. <laughs> this is a little different situation. It's right now there's hundreds of groups out there that they started their groups because they don't want these pipelines because they've learned what happens when there's spills. And they learned that from me. So I'm not I'm not the start of all this. 
but I really have the evidence, like like um, um, Leonard Krogog, one of the top tribal chiefs and in, in medicine men in the country. He said to me, he said, there's a hundred documentaries being made about Standing Rock. And he said, yours is number one. He said, what you have done is the tip on the spear. It is the information that we need to show every tribal member and every single person in the country. Um, General Clark's son, I mean, I just met with him, Wes Clark, he was up to Standing Rock and he cried like a baby when he saw my video. And he says every single person before you vote should watch this video. Please understand that this is just a tiny bit of what I got. When I get enough money, I'm going to be able to hire people to help me edit and help me go through documents and help me put a case together so that way we can have a four-hour series and educational videos to protect people when there's oil spills, what to do, how to do it, when to do it. You know, I actually own the domains, EmbridgeLies.com. Uh, EPALies.com, BP, um, Exxon, um, TransCanada, Kinder Morgan, Shell. I own all these oil companies and environmental groups that um, are, are, are basically against climate change, and the EPA basically. And I have lies on me, LIES.com or .org. And the reason why I bought those is so down the road, when there's an oil spill or something in a community, I can take yard signs and put them all over. They can go to websites. They can watch educational videos, and maybe they'll save their kid's life because they won't believe the air sample test. They will believe me because I'm telling the truth, and they're going to lie. They have a reason to lie. They have hundreds of millions of dollars for a reason to lie. Absolutely. And I'm going to tell you, uh, the Standing Rock situation hit me really hard. Uh, I, I did an episode uh, with my radio show, when I had a radio show, uh, that got some legal help from Washington, D.C. to Standing Rock. So, I mean, uh -huh. we're, we're, we're in the same business. <laughs> thank you for that. Thank, thank you for helping them out there because um, it's, it's far and few, you know, for people really to do some damage. Um, there's a lot of people out there. There's 10,000 people out there at one time, and then they were coming and going, you know. But uh, um, thank you for doing that. The legal avenue is really a way for us to set precedents in the court uh, to get things to change. Um, that's why I'm trying to get my videos out there so people can use it as evidence. When Ember says they that they don't lie, um, I can prove that that's a lie. Um, right now, there's two pipelines going through the Great Lakes. They're 64 years old. They're bowed and bent, and, and the shape of the pipe has changed. Um, the, the structure on the outside of the pipe, which is a coating, has actually came off in several areas, so it's starting to rust. And so the 64-year-old pipeline that was only made to last 50 years is now pumping oil through our Great Lakes, and we need to shut it down. It's going to bust at any time, but they don't care. Remember, they want that revenue because the regulations right now say they can't build a new pipe, so they're trying to squeeze every dollar they can out of the old pipe, and they're not going to stop until it actually is, they're forced to stop it or it spills, and if we don't stop it quick, it's going to spill, and it's going to ruin the Great Lakes, and we're going to lose billions of dollars in tourism, no fishing, no hunting around those local areas, you know, um, you're not going to want your sea dews or boats out there because you're going to get oil all over them. It's going to ruin everything. Well, that just means they have more people they can have as wage slaves, wage slaves and, and work more often and not a reason to go out and then they can, you know, buy more food uh, yeah. shipped in from, you know, the specific... Uh, Pacific Ocean, and have Fukushima radiation, and, yeah. and, and it's all agenda between one wrapped up layer by layer by layer by layer by layer. This is all I see. They want to imprison everyone, put us, well, in, I mean, put us in, a, in a box, and, and feed us crap. That's that's, that's basically true. what they want to do. It's hundred percent true. I mean, look at the bottled water industry. I mean, you have a lot of the rich oil workers or oil um, tycoons that actually own, through the grapevine, they own these large 
um, water companies. Uh, President Bush, um, um, he actually bought the largest freshwater lake in South America. Why? Because he knows how much water is going to be worth someday. And the people over in South America that are now going to lose that water, you know, I don't think Bush cares about that. He's just no. thinking of his book. You're absolutely right. And, yeah, poison water means we're buying water. I mean, I think it's really dumb that people are buying water out of the stores. 95% uh, of it's tap water anyways. They have no idea about I know. that. I, I, I used to laugh at people that I was like, who in the heck is going to buy it when I was a kid? Who is going to buy bottled water? I laughed at them. And now I do it. I have filters. I have three filters on all my water before my kids drink it. Mm. You know, I, they mentally messed us up because now we believe that we have to have filtered water. And uh, I, I drink distilled water. water. <laughs> yeah. oh. Fluoride, the whole fluoride ordeal has me drinking like distilled water. So uh, it's. That's good. That's really good. Kalamazoo. <laughs> They were just caught with seven times the fluoride that's supposed to be in there. I mean, with that is dumbing us down. It's poisoning us. I mean, if you you know read the toothpaste, it says don't swallow that little pea-sized drop of toothpaste, but they put it in our water. It doesn't make water. it possible. So stupid. Absolutely. So we're getting down to the last few minutes of the the show. Is there something? extra that you want to add? Uh, is, are you promoting anything? Yeah, okay. Why is life? <laughs> Help a dot So that stands for honor, environment, love, people, protect all. Honor, environment, love, people, protect all. Help a dot org. Please go there. If, come on. I mean, if you got the money, I'll do the dirty work for you. I'll risk my life for you. You know, just make sure I got gasoline to get around. That's all I care about. And you, I know your sweater, water protector. There are a thousand water protector groups on Facebook. I, I'm going to have my people get on that and spread this around. But is this something official? Or is it just every group that has their own water protector? Well, I mean, this is a, the T-shirt. Uh, you know, I gave out, God, uh, probably... Twenty thousand dollars in T-shirts um, for free, you know. I mean, I just put on my website two weeks ago that a person wants to buy them, but I've been giving them all away for free just because it's so important to me to get, you know, make sure that people are wearing these. We have to protect our water. I want people to feel proud when they walk in a room and someone says, "What's water protector?" and they and then maybe they'll talk about what I'm doing, you know, and maybe it'll wake them up. And who knows what's going to happen down the road if we all work together. You know, if there is a thousand of me um, or a thousand of you, God, what could we do? And so we just need to band together. And if you can't get off the sofa because you have a job and you have a family and mortgage and you don't want death threats, you know, you need to fund us. A uh, little here, a little there. But just find groups that you can trust, that they're not using it wrongfully, you know. I keep all my receipts. I have proof where everything goes that I spent. And that's a, a wonderful thing you just said. You cannot blame the people who want to feed their families. You can't blame these people who, ha you know, have kids, wife, mortgage, and 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 all that uh, tie you down stuff. <laughs> uh, it's not everyone can just be an activist and go out because they have so much to lose. But if you fund the good guys, well, you can offset the damage. Like you know, at least try. At least try. I, I probably wouldn't be a whistleblower if I if it happened today. I don't know how I would react because um, back then I didn't have kids. I didn't have a wife. I didn't have a house. I didn't have anything. All I had was I was working an oil job and traveling around the country and having fun going out with my friends and meeting girls. That was my life. And then... Um, I woke up. I saw the oil spill in my community. I saw people getting sick. I saw a cover-up, and they called me a liar. And so, you know, I, I told them I was going to cost them a billion bucks, and I have. You don't call me a liar because I'm not a liar. <laughs> and 
And I'm going to keep doing this. Now that I do have a family, I am scared. I have 12 cameras circling my house. I have cameras on my RV. I have security lights everywhere. I, I try to protect us as much as possible, but, you know, they're, they're big and powerful. And the thing is, the reason why I haven't got shot, if, if you are wondering out there, is because they don't want me to be a martyr. Um, my, my videos are part of core record now. I did 16 hours of testimony under oath. I had 40 other people testify under oath. And so if I died tomorrow, basically all these hundreds of groups, water protectors that have started, they would actually take my footage and my evidence and they would probably write 50 books and they would write, you know, I have 20 documentaries and they would amplify what I do 100 times because I would be dead. And so they don't want me to be a martyr. They're just trying right now to, you know, make it look like an accident. So if, if they think, or if they say I commit suicide, I'm telling you they're lying. And uh, I'll never commit suicide. I went through really bad stuff in my life, and I will not commit suicide. So uh, just if you hear of something like that, I want you to know that they killed me. Well, if you're not directly involved with the Clintons, chances <laughs> are you have a good you, you have a good chance of not being suicided, as my good friend uh, Lou Guerrero likes to say. Um, yeah, you're right. You're <laughs> Sandy Hook, I, people, some people get so mad about me about Sandy Hook, but there's so much evidence that proves that that was, you know, Agenda 21 wanted to get rid of our weapons. And oh, yeah. they had a vote right before Sandy Hook, or right after Sandy Hook, and, I mean, there, there's just so much evidence. People, just like 9-11 with the building, they got the largest insurance policy right before the buildings fell. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Firefighters and police officers said they heard bombs. You know, yeah. the, the oil spill, real quick. They bought the largest insurance policy about 30 days before the oil spill. They bought the largest cleanup company called Scoots and Boots 11 days before the spill happened. They knew it was going to happen. And, and people just need to know that they're controlling all of this, and it is the population. Sad to say, but everything points to that. Okay. Well, John, I want to thank you for having being on my show and Thank you. coming out about all this information. I'm going to tell you right now, you know, you're not going to go anywhere. Uh, you're a good friend of the show, and I hope to do lots of production work with you. Thank you, and I, I'm hoping that you do. Thank you so much. <laughs> all right. Thank you for being on. Thank you for calling me. I appreciate it, B. Well, you know, I'm going to say I've had your phone number written in my big contact list uh, uh, book for the show and I rem didn't remember the name but as soon as I called you I've had your name your name number written out for a year and a half I, ca I called you up and I was like oh this guy I thought I lost his number <laughs> I've got 2,000 phone numbers in my phone. I don't know who most of them are, and they're wonderful people. But it's but I'm right now. I'm going out to California, and hopefully, you know, Hollywood takes some interest in this because we need hundreds of millions of people to see this information and evidence. And I'm I'm the real deal. I I'm risking my life on a daily basis to do this, and and I'm former former military. You know, I really support my troops. I love my country. And I am right now fighting for the people in my country every day. Same here. We're both in the same boat. <laughs> I work for free, though. That's, at least with the government, you get a paycheck. That's what sucks. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're a blessing. Thank you for calling me. Thank you, even though it took a while. You know, once you see that video, people, you just have to watch the video. I'm just asking an hour out of your life will change your life. I promise you that. I'm going to re-release it and probably put the link into this show. Okay? Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, along with the original and any other videos that I find. And it's going to blow you away, people. Please check it out. Check the audio.
had a video, it was live stream. Uh, we saw that the Chicagoan camp is being attacked. They're spraying water on everybody, which is actually freezing everybody. It's so cold out. I don't know how our government can do this to these people. Everybody's gonna see how disgraceful you are. They're on this side of the barbed wire. They cannot hurt you. If you shoot them, you are a coward. Give up your badge. Think about it. Look at what you're doing. up on the hill, okay? I watched you shoot women and children and unarmed people with bullets. You shot the girl's arm off with a percussion grenade. We are peaceful people. I am a former Embridge Yard boss. I used to work for oil companies. They devastated my community. <laughs> we have hundreds of people that are sick. My daughter was born with a deformity. My uncle died. My dog died. My cat's got a tumor. My kidney's messed up. And you should turn in your badges. I am making a website with all of your faces on it. And the world will see what you have done. Oh,